Founded in 1921 through efforts by the local bar association and the women's club, Louisville's Legal Aid Society has more than 90 years history of providing legal services to the poor. Legal Aid Executive Director Jeff Bean joins us now. Welcome. Great. It's great to be here. Tell me a little bit about how the Legal Aid Society got its start and its connection to our city's most famous jurist. Sure. Um, so when the Bar Association and the Women's Club met in 1921, December 15th, almost, as you said, 90 years over ago, um, they had Mrs. Alfred Brandeis, who was the sister-in-law to Louis Brandeis, Supreme Court Justice, who was instrumental in charting the course for our organization. And they wanted to ensure that our legal system was available and accessible to all, regardless of economic circumstance. So if a person is facing a legal problem um, that affects basic human needs, the Legal Aid Society steps forward and helps that client, whether it's a matter of personal safety, a housing crisis, a family stability, or economic security. And we've been doing that these past nine decades. You spoke about it broadly, but what services more specifically do you provide to people? Sure. So on any civil legal need that affects those basic human issues, um, we're able to provide help on housing. It could be a wrongful eviction. It could be a foreclosure action. On family or personal safety, we make sure that victims of domestic violence um, are able to get protective orders and to escape their abuser. We're able to work with families who are um, threatened with um, consumer disputes that may affect their financial stability. And we certainly reach out to seniors who are at risk of exploitation to make sure that they are safe in our community as well. Why should the average Louisvillian who either does not anticipate having any legal issues or could pay for these services himself care and be concerned about what kind of work you're doing? Oh, I, I think the Legal Aid Society has over the past um, decades demonstrated its value both at the individual level and at the broader community level. If you think of the work that we do in helping a homeowner who's threatened with a foreclosure, we're able to help that homeowner negotiate a loan modification so that he can make reasonable, regular payments on that mortgage and keep his home. But at the broader community level, we're helping that neighborhood, making sure that that home doesn't become a vacant and abandoned property. We're making sure it doesn't attract vandals. We're making sure that it doesn't depress the property values in that neighborhood. So I like to think of the Legal Aid Society as more than just a safety net social service organization. I really think it's part of the social fabric of our community. And if we're committed um, to ensuring that access is free and available to all, we need to have a Legal Aid Society. For people who are not lawyers, but who are interested in the kind of work you're doing and want to help, how could a person help you? Sure. Um, you know, the work that we do um, is always free to anybody who meets our financial qualifications and eligibility. Our clients are living at the poverty level, so um, we are supported and we're able to make these services available for free because of the generous support that we get. And it's a blend of um, government grants, both at the federal, state, local level, and in addition, we get foundation support and one-third of our annual operating budget um, consists of charitable, charitable contributions, and I can't tell you how important that one-third of our budget is to sustain our work. You mentioned that your clients are living at poverty level. Tell me a little bit more about who your clients are. Sure. Our clients are those individuals who are working, they're struggling. This economic recession has been particularly hard on them. They're m making it from paycheck to paycheck, and these are clients who um, for a household of two, their annual income is probably 20000 or less. For a household of four, a parent uh, and, two, and two children, probably an annual income of 30000 or less. These are individuals that their paycheck goes to pay for their housing expenses, food on the table, and they really don't have the economic means to seek legal help. And that's where the Legal Aid Society comes in. Finally, if someone feels that he or she could use your help and might need to seek your help, what recommendations would you give to that person to get him or her prepared to come and tell you about whatever the situation might be? Sure. First, I'd check out our website, um, Legal Aid Society. We're at LASLOU.org. And what you will see there is a list of resources that we make available to the community. 
um, as well as clinics that we offer, as well as you can do an online application. If you don't have a computer, just give us a call. And we have individuals who take a person through an interview process. Mm -hmm. We try to spot what those issues are, and then we try to resolve that. You know, there's 190,000 people living in poverty in the 15 county service area that we are helping in. We recognize we can't help everyone by being in court with them for every civil legal need, but what we can do is to identify resources and perhaps give them the tools, give them the advice that will allow them and empower them to make some of those actions on them, their own. For certain cases, absolutely, if they qualify, we'll take them, we'll be in court, we'll be their adv advocate, we'll be their voice. All right, well, Jeff, thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here.